So at this point, we have this drilling moratorium. They've tried another, the administration's tried another approach here. Obviously, David is, you guys are filing in support of this moratorium and working really hard on this. But we had a, I had an interesting exchange with both of both David and, and Bob yesterday, where Bob, you said you're, you're this guy from who's had this long history of the oil industry and you support the moratorium. And then I talked to David, and you're, you're from an Enviro group, but you said, you know, you kind of realize that there's going to be offshore drilling and how do we think about it smartly? So I'm wondering what's, where, where are you on this moratorium? What comes next? What should, you know, what, what should we be looking for in this longer term, bigger picture? How we approach drilling uh, offshore in the deep water? Do you want me to take that? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, first off, I'll, I'll, I'll say that the moratorium that's been <coughs> proposed is just not nearly long enough to do the kinds of things that we need to do. And that's. That's not going to make you popular in the bars down in Louisiana. I'm not popular in the bars. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I understand the economic and the job issue. I understand that. But I have to say that that's a, that's a money issue that can be fixed with fines and, 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 and the, the contribution from BP, that, that $100 million that they put up. We can, get, we can always get them to put up more, the industry to put up. When you're talking about people's lives, you have to stop talking about money. Because mm. I, I've, I've been injured myself in, in the business. You're, if you've been in the business 30 years, you've been hurt. You know, I've, I've had other guys, other people on, on my crews hurt. I had, I had a guy on one of my crews killed back in 81, but it, I still remember it like it was yesterday. For everybody who opposes the, the moratorium, the question I have is, what happened on the horizon where every safety system failed? And what did we do to fix that? Of course, nobody can answer that. So until somebody can answer that, I'm unwilling to risk people's lives for money. And that's what we're talking about here. We can help the economy. The, the government, a stronger government, and the industry can help the workers maintain this period of time. But we've got to redesign, we've got to rethink and we have to re-regulate the way we do this business before we go back. It's just too important. I was uh, down in Louisiana last week, and I was talking to some locals, and uh, I was kind of surprised because I, I found near universal dislike of the moratorium. And this is among working people, and um, you talk to, uh, you know, uh, fishermen who have been put out of work by the spill, and you think, well, these guys must really hate BP and the oil industry, and quite the contrary. Um, a lot of these guys would say, look, when the fishing's bad, I go out and work on the rigs, and so does my brother, and my father did this, and there's a whole history of, of working people, uh, particularly in Louisiana, just sort of moving between the oil industry and the fishing industry, and, you know, they need to feed their kids. And um, it's, you can, you know, you can say what you want. These aren't stupid people. These are people who need to put bread on the table uh, and feed their kids. Um, from the, you know, taking it up a step and just putting aside all the legal stuff we're dealing with now uh, up in the Fifth Circuit, my own view is that it's past irresponsible, that it's reckless to allow a single new well to be permitted until and unless we know what happened on the deep water horizon. It could be, and that's, that's my view. I mean, it's not, I mean, we're talking about what, 11 men got killed on the deep water horizon. You're talking about the health, the, the safety of the workers. You're talking about the fishing industry and the hospitality industry in, in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast are much, much more important to those economies than oil is. And another spill, I mean, they're down now. Another spill is just gonna take them out. And I just, I don't think we can or ought to risk that uh, as a society. The moratorium that has get gathered so much, uh, you know, so much heat. The moratorium affected 33 wells out of thousands of wells that are down there. Not one of those wells was producing. They're all exploratory wells. So if the argument is made, oh, we're losing a valuable <coughs> energy, we're not going to have. That's just simply not true because none of those wells was was pumping one ounce of oil for sale. Um, and so you've got. And some of them hadn't even started drilling yet. So the job loss we're talking about is six months, not forever, six months for the crews who either were working or might have been working on 33 wells. And, you know, 
what's that, a few hundred guys, a uh, few hundred people, is that kind of what we're talking about? There's about 300 per room. Okay. Uh, because there's two, there's two right. crews, there's two crews here. But I have to say something. I don't, sure. I don't mean to. to, to oh, go ahead. The, 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 the argument about employment really kind of aggravates me because all of these rigs are foreign flag rigs. That's right. They're rigged in the, they're, they're, they're flagged in the Marshall Islands, Liberia, the Caymans, Panama. Yeah, these are ships. And these are classified as ships. They're and, not like buildings. And what that means, most people. It, 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 people just question why that is, and no, no, it, it, and no one ever, ever really explains it. What that means is if they're not flagged in the United States, that means they're not required to carry U.S. crews, and they're subject to different inspection requirements than U.S. vessels. So to me, it's a false argument for the drilling industry to say, well, if, if we can't drill here, we're just going to take the rigs and, and we're going to move them to, to offshore Africa, and all these people will lose their jobs. My answer is, if you flag the rig in the United States, the jobs go with the rig. Because the airplanes fly to Africa just like they fly to South Louisiana. You can take those workers and keep them on that rig. The only reason they're being fired is because the drilling company set it up that way. So they can make more money taking the rig to Africa and using lower paid labor there than taking the highly skilled, highly trained, well paid workers that we have in South Louisiana. I'd like, just like to uh, add to this whole discussion with regard to um, the thing that you hear all the time is we've got to drill up our coastline because we need to be energy independent. We need to be energy independent. And I think that sometimes, again, you guys get a chance to, to write and reach people. I think sometimes people actually think that these are mom and pop <laughs> oil drilling folks out there, uh, they're gonna sell all that oil right here in America. And so this is our oil, our coastline, our oil companies, and we're gonna drill up these coastlines, risk America's beauty, so we can be energy independent. And the reality is, uh, we've got a swarm of multinational corporations from all over the world drilling up those coastlines, risking America's uh, uh, environment and economy and workers and everything else to sell that oil anywhere they want to. Uh, I mean, we're basically, uh, I mean, the, the big demand's gonna be in Asia. That's where, the, that's where most of our oil is going. This is not, so there's a strange con uh, conversation that we have in America that, the, the, that there's some big difference between us drilling up our own coastline and bringing uh, oil from another country when in fact it's a global market these are global corporations, uh, and we've got to be very, very careful. Uh, and real energy independence means you, you're, you're using homegrown energy. Uh, you're, you're, you have made in American energy that American corporations and American companies and American entrepreneurs and innovators and workers have a piece of. Now you can do that in the clean, in, uh, clean energy a lot more easily than you can uh, in the old dirty stuff which is not to say that we don't have a bunch of European uh, uh, wind companies here, but, there, but, but we've got to begin to push harder on this idea of what does real energy independence look like? Is it letting multinational corporations come over here, drill up our coastlines to sell oil to Asia? What does that have to do with energy independence? Um, why is that something that we're all excited about? Uh, real energy independence uh, requires a lot more than that. And I'm hoping, let me just finish off the moratorium issue, um, that that's a lesson that we take from even this very brief time out for a very small number of rigs is to have a real conversation in all over the country <coughs> about what it's going to take to get to what Van just said, because we do need to get there. Uh, we really do need to get there. It's, you know, in California, wh where I live, you see these windmills up on the ridges. A lot of those are made in China. Why? Why can't we make those things here? When you look at the solar panels that people are nailing up on roofs, a lot of those are made in China. You could make them here. The, the Chevy Volt, you know, it's touted as the greatest new, you know, all-electric car. The battery's made in Korea and the, the transmission's made in Austria. Why? We don't have, you know, auto workers here who could make that stuff? It just, it seems to me, I mean, it's just crazy. This is a win-win proposition for everybody to get to clean energy and to have good paying, you know, green collar, so to speak. And to me, a green collar job doesn't mean you're planting arugula in your garden. You know, if you're working in a machine shop and there's there's you know, sparks flying and metal shavings on the, the ground and stuff. 
and you're making windmill turbines, that's a green job. We can have those jobs and we can have those good paying jobs here in the United States and we, we need to get off our butts and move in that direction. So I'm hoping that the, the surus, if you will, that's been kicked up by the moratorium will help move us in that direction.